Okay. Uh, well, I mean, it would, we'll be kicking off, right, in about 48 hours, uh, which will be fun uh, for our guys. A really exciting day for University of Arizona. Uh, great opportunity uh, I had today to spend some time with Coach Lloyd. I had an opportunity to talk with him last night as well, and uh, really excited about doing this journey together. Both of us just kind of walking in the same opportunity. Um, I told him, I said, I'm a crafty vet here. I've been here four months, so anything you need to know, I probably can help you there. But uh, he was uh, he was great. Uh, we're really excited to do this thing together. I, I said to he and uh, Coach Barnes that we all got a uh, we all got a fresh new start right now. So it's pretty awesome that we're all ready to kick this thing off together. And um, we know that we got our work cut out for us, but really excited about the opportunity. Excited to welcome here. What do you remember about that first day when you introduced as a head coach? You know, it was so different because it was in December and the COVID situation was so unique that I my press conference was in the New England Patriots conference room across the hall from Coach Belichick while he was getting ready for a team meeting. So the situation, my family was on a Zoom call um, and we, we really, you didn't get to experience the same thing as obviously you had always dreamt of experiencing, but on the same token, you also just start, your phone is just going crazy um, and you just have the excitement and energy of like, this is the, this is the day you hoped for the day you dreamt of when you got involved in this profession. And I know from listening to his message at the press conference, he felt the same way. Why was it important for you to establish better connections with the football alumni here? Well, you know, it wasn't even like, I don't know if it was better or not. Cause I wasn't here before, but for me, it was so important to establish connections with the alumni and they're the ones that, you know, built this the foundation of the program. They're the ones that live through it. They're just brothers and teammates of the guys that are here. They're just playing in a different time frame. And uh, where I've been, the places I've coached at, um, specifically you pull from University of Michigan or University of Miami, I mean, the, the football alumni is so huge and so critical to the success of the program. And then when I started in this business was with Coach Furrier and he was a football alumni. He was a Heisman Trophy winner at the school that he was coaching at. Um, so I also always recognized how important that was to him. And uh, I try to emulate a lot of things that he did in this profession. And one of which was always uh, including the alumni and the second, which was um, building great relationships with all the coaches um, among all the sports in the university. No, we got rid of that um, based on NCAA. They made it very strict to have alumni on the sidelines we didn't have any of that that was kind of more of that usc miami eras of you know about 15 years ago 20 years ago that they were doing that we didn't have much alumni on the sideline i think at some point in time you know you have that balance of your team that you're trying to get ready for a game and they're not really they only allow a certain number of people in the coach's box so you know i just want them to feel comfortable and be around our kids and be around our program and come to everything and anything they possibly can come to what does it mean for the program to reestablish a relationship with Rob Gronkowski? You know, I, I, I didn't realize that there wasn't one, you know, that he wasn't here for nine years, hasn't been back on campus. Um, so for me, there was always a relationship. So I never really thought about it in that regard. Um, got a chance to be around him a few years ago when I was visiting New England. Obviously, coaching in New England, you have a little bit of a, even though he wasn't there, you still are kind of have that brothers and, and bond there. And then uh, a lot of the coaches on that staff in Tampa are very close friends of mine. So I know that they were on him pretty quick. And uh, I talked to him this morning and he was fired up about coming in next weekend. So I'm excited about that. You know, I saw some of them and I think they're all really just the smart thing to do based on the circumstances that we have been living in under the last 15 months. You know, the opportunity to work some guys out. Normally, you get to see them do things. A lot of guys were strapped with not being able to play high school football or only being able to play five games in the spring or only being able to, um, you know, due to COVID, practice and stop practicing. And the chance to be able to work them out is great. And an unofficial, the opportunity to bring them in officially in June is fantastic. We're excited about that. Um, obviously, there's some discussion regarding the one-time transfer waiver, which is – Another good, um, another good rule uh, that they took care of there. And then 
the phone call setup that they started it just makes sense right now. We need to we need to reconnect with the kids that we were not able to connect with over the last 15 months. And for me, it's a huge it's a huge bonus because I was coaching in another league. Coach, what's he like out of work on his rush tonight? I thought he did some good things. He hit some passes that were down the field. I think we hit on about two or three long ones today, which was good for him. Uh, we just need more consistency out of the quarterback position. We're not we're not playing consistent enough. We're not hitting enough passes. We're not controlling the line of scrimmage the way I expect us to. So what we are doing is we are bouncing back. We're having a couple tough plays, and then we're bouncing back and having a big play, and it kind of gets the momentum back. But we would look for more consistency out of that position, all positions. Uh, but I, I think the receivers had a very good day today, um, which was good to see. And, you know, guys like c is just doing an unbelievable job. Special shout-out right there. So uh, super excited about the, the way um, the defense played today. What are your expectations for those two linebackers coming in from the back? Um, to compete. You know, like in everything that we're trying to do, we're trying to build competition. Um, whether they're coming in from high school, whether they're coming in from another university, whether they're com- whatever conference they might be coming in from, uh, we feel really good about their talent. We feel really good about the quality of uh, player that they are, that they are able to immediately impact our program. And then what they're going to do is they're going to make the guys that are here better. And, you know, we, we said it actually in the initial, I think uh, probably the first time we ever talked, that rising tides lift all ships. And uh, I believe that in everything. I believe it in football and basketball. I believe it in uh, what we're trying to do on our own team right now. And uh, hopefully we'll continue to lift each other up. How often do you reach out to the two players that have signed but haven't arrived yet just to make sure things are going progress? Yeah, our coaches have been really, really good about staying in constant communication. Our recruiting department have stayed in constant communication. We have to make sure that they're completely aware. We're getting close now. I think we're seven weeks away from moving date. Uh, players will be moving in June 7th uh, on, on campus. And um, so any of those, I think there might be 16 or 18 guys coming in on scholarship that uh, during that time. And then also a lot of our walk-on players that are coming in will be coming in at that point also. So we should have close to 120 guys working out uh, starting the first workout June 8th. Um, the game's have long preamble to this question, but um, there was a situation earlier in camp with J.B. Brown playing really well. He's been one of the bigger dudes. He kind of chirped back at the coaches. He was removed from practice briefly. And you talked to him afterward and he was re- you know, he got to practice again. I just wonder, how do you handle a situation like that in general? You know, each situation is a little bit different. I went over the other day uh, in our team meeting. Uh, you throw a punch and you're off the practice field because if you throw a punch in practice in a game, you're off the game field. Um, you chirp in practice, maybe you get a penalty, maybe you get taken out. Um, but we have to just continue to build, uh, relationships and trust and respect with one another and, uh, recognize that there's a difference between the heat of the battle and what you should do. And if you should do the right thing, the heat of the battle, you're able to still stay composed because we're going to need guys to go in each play and the next play and be able to benefit from it. And that's probably what I talked to him about. And uh, we always talk to our players about the accountability mirror. Like you have to look yourself in the mirror before you go to sleep and say, you know, did I do the right thing every day and all day today? And if I did, then so be it. If I didn't, we need to be better. Okay, guys, we'll see you Saturday night. Uh, How did we do in the game on Tuesday? Did we win or not win? Uh, Won. Five to four on a walk-off. So we're all still undefeated. Yeah. (laughs) Tweet that.